Hey guys, it's Dave. Thanks for tuning in. As always, today we have a massive Rocket Lab Neutron milestone to talk about. The Archimedes engine has finally breathed fire for the first time. Previously, we did see some of those spin tests as well as some of those pre-burner tests and things like that. But this is the first confirmed picture from Peter Beck that the engine has actually been breathing fire. Before we dive into that, as well as some other Neutron updates, I do just want to thank this video's sponsor, which is again, Nutshell. Today we have a special competition where if you mention the name Nutshell in a comment down below, you'll be entered for a chance to win a free holster case for your phone. More on Nutshell later on in the video. And as always, if you find this video useful, I do hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button by the end. It'll really help out with the continued growth of this channel, and I will appreciate it a lot. If you're already a subscriber, well, those likes, comments, and shares always help out with the YouTube algorithm as well, so thanks for all that. Okay, now let's dive into Rocket Lab's Neutron updates. So here's the full picture shared by Peter Beck. He said that Archimedes has been breathing fire, started at low power, and are now cranking it up. I was hoping that we would get a full video to share with you guys, something epic, high definition, going at full blast, but I should have known that that's not really the Rocket Lab style, nor the usual rocket development process. First, you start at very low pressures, very low duration burns before increasing the pressure gradually, and then increasing those durations and this is obviously just a very early test, very low pressure, low duration. Now, if you look at the flame, how it's kind of concentrated in the middle and not bending around the edges of the bell as it shoots out the end of the engine, this really tells us that it is a very low pressure, but it's something we already know because Peter Beck told us himself. And of course it is Rocket Lab style to be incredibly methodical and careful and not just go blowing things up. So so should not be any surprise. Now there were some comments on Twitter saying that they thought this might not be a real fire or it's just so incredibly low pressure that they're not too sure about it. And this picture here really does show what they're talking about. So really closer to what this Archimedes engine one looks like showing that the pressures were not high enough to force those flames and hot ga gases all the way around the engine bell. If you're interested in the difference, we can see an engine test here from an Ursa Major engine and those flame plumes coming out nicely following that path of that bell shape as opposed to just staying in the middle with the lower pressures that we're seeing so far on Archimedes. Now, in terms of the stock's reaction to this move, even though it did have a pretty big run-up in the pre-market, all the way up to about $5 per share, after that, it kind of dropped off and opened fairly low. While it did ultimately close up about 1.2%, that's actually pretty much in line with the NASDAQ and S&P with a stock that has a beta that Rocket Lab does of around 1.25. I would have thought maybe it would have outperformed a little bit more, especially when you're talking about a big news day like this. So it looks like Rocket Lab pretty much performed in line with the overall markets and we didn't ultimately get much of a big move on this news. Overall, I'm okay with that. I know I've said previously I'm looking to buy more shares probably after my wedding, which is coming up fairly soon and I have more cash available. But how I think about it is that the more risk that gets removed from this company while it continues to move pretty much in line with the overall markets, uh, the bigger the move should be once it finally does move, whether that's because of Neutron's first launch, a really good earnings call, some sort of new contract announcement, uh, first launch contracts for Neutron, or maybe it takes until the company gets profitable and starts making a lot of cash. Whenever that point is, I think the longer the stock has been suppressed and not really reacting to positive news, the bigger that move should eventually be. So there was some additional intrigue around this hot fire test because some rumors were going around on Twitter, X, and Reddit, as well as a lot of other places that the Archimedes engine may have blown up. This mostly stems from this post here from the space engineer. Uh, they were following some fire tracking in the area and comparing that to Peter Beck's tweets and seeing that Rocket Lab was saying the first engine test fire should be in about seven days. Then they had a blip that looked like fire six days later and then nothing from Rocket Lab. So the potential conclusion drawn was that maybe something had gone wrong and Rocket Lab had gone radio silent after that. Then there was a 
rapid unscheduled disassembly as it is known but obviously that is not the case and now i did see a lot of people on twitter kind of bashing this person and saying you were wrong you know here's what you get and i just want to say you know i appreciate a good bit of internet sleuthing as much as anyone and when i make my videos i often try to find pizza pieces of data like this to piece things together so just because this didn't turn out to be true i don't think we really should be hating on space engineer i'm sure he wasn't actually rooting for our communities to fail he was just trying to find out more information for us and share it in the community so i always appreciate people you know posting and sharing more stuff. I think it really helps out more than harms in the long run. Now let's take a quick break to hear from today's sponsor, Nutshell. If you're tired of cheap, poorly made phone cases and holsters, then today's sponsor, Nutshell, is for you. They make premium handcrafted phone holsters using only the highest quality, genuine leather and come with a two-year warranty in the event of any problems. Nutshell is offering an exclusive 10% discount code for viewers of this channel with code DAVEG or by clicking the link in the description down below. I have a couple different models myself and I can confirm that they're all very high quality and it's great not to have my pockets overflowing with phones and wallets during my workday. Nutshell is also a New Zealand based small business so if you happen to be a Kiwi and like supporting local as well, definitely give them a look. Thank you again to Nutshell for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So just to tell you a little bit more about engine development and test processes, not that I'm the expert on it by any means, but I have done a bit of research. So what I've read is that there are usually about six stages. You have your design verification where engineers employ computer software to simulate the engine's operation and aim to verify that the design functions as anticipated before actually building a physical engine. After this you individually and test components. Every single component, whether it's the turbo pumps, combustion chambers, nozzles, or others are tested individually to ensure they can handle the required stress, heat tolerance, vibrations, and others. Then you have your engine assembly. Rocket Lab obviously has already completed this as well because we saw that assembled engine quite a while back now and it has been at Stannis for a while. Then you have your static testing, which is when the engine is assembled, put on the test stand, and you have your firing there. That's where we are currently. After that, you have your integrated vehicle testing, which actually means installing the engine in the vehicle and test firing it there, as opposed to test firing it on the stand, what they're doing right now. And then you have your flight testing, of course. But within the static stand testing, there is quite a bit of range that I wanted to talk about because it's not just simply turn it on a few times, make sure it works, then stick it on a rocket. You do have three different categories when it comes to test firing on these stands. First category would be development testing, which you do to you know figure out the design you want, figure out any problems, and make sure there's no issues with your design. I feel like Rocket Labs kind of pretty much skipped this phase as they've said this engine they're testing and they pretty much consider to be a production product. Uh, next test, is the qualification test, which is also known as certification test. And these are conducted to demonstrate that the design, manufacturing processes, and acceptance program produce hardware and software that meet the requirements with adequate margin to accommodate multiple rework and test cycles. So basically just making sure your design lives up to snuff. Qualification tests should ultimately validate your design. And after the engine has been qualified, you know you have a good design, that's when you can go on to acceptance testing. Now, acceptance testing continues basically for the life of the engine program as you continue to build new engines. Every time you build a new engine, you stick it on the stand and you go through a procedure called acceptance testing to ensure that that specific engine lives up to the stresses and the environment and the pressures that are expected from that qualified design and make sure that this engine lives up to that design in every way before you actually stick it on a rocket. 
These acceptance tests also ensure that the item meets performance specifications and that there has been error-free workmanship in the manufacturing. So obviously we're not yet at that point. We're still qualifying the engine to ensure that the design meets specifications and performs as intended, which will happen as they continue to make more and more hot fires, slowly increasing those pressures, slowly increasing those burn durations. And keep in mind, they also have to worry about reusability and make making sure these engines can handle the stresses of re-entry as well as launch and that they will be ready shortly thereafter to re-fire. Other items that they may test includes gimbling, which is basically pointing the engines in different directions to make sure they can do that. And they also want to run it harder on the test stand than they will ever have to run on the actual rocket to make sure that the design and the engine can withstand even more pressures than it'll ever be put under in the real work environment. Now I did want to share a slide here from NASA. Admittedly, it's quite old. It's from the 41st Joint Propulsion Conference at Arizona back in 2005, but I think the slide is interesting and pretty illuminating here. It's basically a survey of various engines as they go through their test campaigns, looking at some stats on in terms of how these campaigns went. So you can see, for example, the RS-68 engine, which was on the, the Delta IV rocket. This had a total of 11,000 hot fire test seconds f prior to the first flight. So numbers can vary dramatically, but we, sh but we should definitely be looking into the high tens to maybe hundreds, maybe multiple hundreds of thousands of seconds of hot fire for the full test campaign in order to qualify the engine as the design being sound and meeting requirements. Another aspect of these engines is they're obviously going to have to at least one of them refire in order to land propulsively back on a barge and then eventually back at the launch site. So they'll have to be able to make sure the engine can relight in those kind of conditions and relight after firing for the full duration and performing the mission to get the rocket into orbit. Now in terms of the progress on Neutron for the body and the overall rocket, I figured I'd share what we know so far. This graphic is courtesy of friend of the channel and all around good guy, Captain D2. I understand he's working on some new pretty cool renders for us as well, so can't wait to see those. But for now, what we've seen from Neutron and where it fits in the rocket I think is very interesting and illuminating for a lot of people who don't really understand how it all comes together. So in terms of the second stage, which will sit higher up in the rocket near the top that the payloads go on, we've already seen the body of that. We've already seen some Archimedes engines getting ready. Now this will be a vacuum optimized one that will work better in space. We haven't seen that yet. The aft dome for that tank, as well as the LOX tank walls and the CH4 tank. We've also had flight computers already seen, as well as a stage two thrust puck down at the bottom that channels all those fluids into the engine properly. Now on the main body of the first stage rocket, we've already seen stage one fixed fairings sections in the bottom half. This will comprise a large portion of the body of this rocket. Up above, we've seen stage one fin demos. Now these aren't production articles and they are very likely to change, but that's what that kind of will look like. We've had the fairing pieces up on the top. The, these will protect those fragile satellites from the atmosphere while the rocket is going up into space before eventually opening and closing again. Each one of these pieces appears to be about an eighth of the overall fairing. They'll combine to form two halves which will open and close like the hungry hippo jaws we were always talking about. We've also had the stage one forward dome mold that'll be used to make those carbon composites structures for the forward dome as well as the LOX tank mold down below. So it all really is starting to come together. Archimedes, one of the major points that we really want to see get ready to go, may have been the biggest point holding up the rocket from that end of 2024 timeline. So really is very important to see Archimedes test campaign get going, but don't forget about all these other pieces too. Finally, just a few quick notes on ground infrastructure and launch pad. 
We did have a picture shared recently by Peter Beck showing Rocket Lab's shiny new water tower, preventing any damage to ground equipment, as well as what looks like a few new tank structures for storing perhaps propellants, although it's still very zoomed out and unfortunately a bit of a foggy day. We also did see this video shared around the internet showing construction trucks hard at work on the ground infrastructure, as it looks like the infrastructure for Neutron's pad is going up extremely quickly. By the way, just a few other notes, it looks like I will be getting the opportunity to talk to Peter Beck after the upcoming earnings call, which is very exciting. So if you have some ideas for good questions for him, uh, I'm not making any promises that I'll accept your questions, but do drop them in the comments below. And if I think it's a really good one, maybe I'll try to slide it in there with Peter, really excited to get the chance to talk to him and potentially meet Adam. Speaking of that earnings call, hopefully we will get lots of new pictures, maybe some videos on Neutron and Archimedes, and then we can do some updates all over again in a couple weeks. So very exciting time for Neutron. Things are really starting to come together. The Archimedes, the last piece that we've really been looking for, has started to breathe fire. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, do leave a comment mentioning Nutshell if you're interested in winning a free case from them. I'll check out your comments down below. Do let me know if you have any great suggestions for questions for Peter and the gang. Hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.